As the FPGA based accelerator design flow is a new topic, its learning requires a step by step approach with several examples. The structure of this course is based on this assumption. This course is the first step towards using HLS to accelerate algorithms on FPGA based embedded systems. In this course, I will take the HLS approach to explain the fundamental concepts in describing compute-intensive tasks for FPGAs. I assume that you are familiar with C++. This course looks at FPGA from a high-level perspective without going into the low-level hardware details. This course would give you the foundation of using HLS for function acceleration in Xilinx Zinc-based embedded systems to enhance your productivity. The only prerequisite for this course is the basic understanding of C, C++ language. And you don't need to read any specific document. However, referring to Xilinx documents, especially Vitus High Level Synthesis User Guide, UG1399, is recommended. For more examples and discussions about the HLS-based design approach, you can refer to the highlevel-synthesis.com website or the course YouTube channel. If you have any questions or issues regarding the concepts and codes presented in this course, please refer to the Q&A section. In this course, you will learn how to use Vitus Design Flow to describe a variety of algorithms and how to work with the state-of-the-art HLS software tools to implement real applications on Zinc-based embedded systems. This is a practical course. Throughout the course, I will explain the concepts of FPGA structure, software tools, HLS techniques, and coding styles to implement several examples. This course comprises four parts. The first part is called Prologue, which introduces the course and its structure throughout two lectures. The current video is the second lecture. The second part is called FPGA and Lab Setup, which gives you a big picture of embedded systems, the HLS for FPGA and its design flow, and how to install related software tools and set up the target FPGA boards. It consists of three sections, including 19 lectures. The third part explains how to describe algorithms using C, C++, OpenCL language in Vitus. This part consists of eight sections and about 58 lectures. Finally, the last part puts all explained techniques together to implement two exciting projects. It consists of two sections and 16 lectures. The first project implements the sparse matrix vector multiplication operator. This operator is one of the common operations used in several areas, including finite element problems, scientific optimizations, circuit simulation, machine learning, sparse neural network, sparse convolutional neural networks, just to name a few. The second project implements the support vector machines, which are the most popular classification and regression analysis tools in machine learning areas. Each lecture describes a single idea, which is presented through a couple of slides. The first slide tells the topic and the motivations. Then it follows by a few slides explaining the main ideas and concepts. After that, a slide gives the motivation of the next lecture by posing a question. This slide also creates a conceptual link between two consecutive lectures. Then I summarize the lecture contributions through a few takeaway messages. The last slide in each lecture contains a quiz that helps you to concentrate on the main idea.
In this course, I have considered designing Zinc embedded systems as our target platforms. I will use two boards, Zybo Z720 and Ultra 96 version 2. However, you can use any Zinc based embedded system platform that you may have access to. The main reason that I have chosen these boards was their price. These boards are cheap and accessible to almost all students, researchers, and individuals. What is the role of FPGA-based embedded systems in the new Edge Cloud Computing Framework? The next lecture will answer this question. These are our takeaway messages. This course explains the fundamentals of accelerating compute-intensive tasks using the Xilinx Whitus Unified Software Platform. You don't need to have in-depth hardware knowledge to follow this course. Familiarity with C++ language is necessary. Now the quiz question. What are the references to get more information about accelerating algorithms on FPGA-based embedded systems?